Hello, I'm Tim Nelms from the UK Association for Accessible Formats, or UCAF for short. We're delighted to be supporting the TechShare Pro 2020 event with a series of lunch and learn sessions aimed at giving you essential facts and information about accessible information standards. Over the course of the next three days, our subject experts are hosting sessions on Braille, large print, audio, EPUB, PDF, office documents, and music. During these sessions, you'll learn about important standards, you'll see demonstrations of assistive technology, and hopefully understand the future of accessible information. During this introductory session, I'm here to tell you about UCAF, uh, the social history and laws affecting accessible information, the types of disability affecting access to information, and the standards UCAF creates for making information accessible to everyone, regardless of disability. A wide range of disabilities affect people's ability to access information and communicate. 285 million people worldwide are blind or partially sighted. In the UK, more than 2 million people live with sight loss, according to the RNIB, and of those, 270,000 are severely sight impaired or blind. 466 million people, over 5% of the world's population, has hearing loss of more than 40 decibels. One in six of the UK adult population is affected by hearing loss, and about 900,000 people are severely or profoundly deaf. 186 million people worldwide, or 2%, have cognitive or learning disabilities. 1.5 million people in the UK are affected by this. It is estimated that between 1 and 2% of the global population has had at any one time a severe speech, language and communication disability, of which as many as 900,000 people in the UK are affected. Disabilities involving vision, hearing, speech, cognition or movement abilities can profoundly affect people's ability to access information and or to communicate. Under legislation like the Equality Act 2010 in the UK and the EU Web Accessibility Directive, a person has the right to be accommodated and receive information adjusted to their needs. Educators, publishers, government banks and many other organisations need guidance on the most appropriate way to make accommodations and provide accessible information. Standards play a critical role in ensuring that all information is accessible to everyone regardless of disability by ensuring that it can be easily read. What do we do? The UK Association for Accessible Formats is the industry association that sets standards and promotes best practice for accessible information in the UK. We work with national and international bodies to represent UK interests in setting information accessible standards worldwide. Our work enables public and private sector organisations to deliver high quality services to meet the needs of people who have information or communication disabilities. We work with organisations representing people with a wide variety of disabilities to publish and promote accessible information standards. Who do we help? Well, we help authors, publishers, businesses and public sector bodies understand how to meet their customers' accessible information needs and meet reasonable adjustment criteria. We help transcribers create and publish accessible information in accordance with best practice guidelines and recognised standards. We help people with information disabilities to access and communicate using open standards. And we represent and promote the interests of people with information disabilities. Finally, we collate feedback from end users and use this to drive the development of accessible information standards with international bodies. Our vision is to make information accessible to everyone, regardless of impairment.
Let's talk about the social history and disability rights. In talking about accessible information, it's important to understand its place in social history and the current laws and regulation driving adoption of accessible technologies. Going back thousands of years of human rights have accumulated in every aspect of society. The abolition of slavery, men's suffrage, women's suffrage, post-war human rights, civil rights, including race, religious and sex discrimination, have all been important steps to the goal of creating an equal society. Disability rights are, unfortunately, at the tail end of a long history of making the world an equal and just place. The first significant global action concerning disability rights and accessibility was the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. The UNCRPD has served as an important catalyst in the global movement uh, to viewing people with disabilities as full and equal members of society. The convention is intended to, quote, promote, protect and ensure the full and equal enjoyment of all human rights and fundamental freedoms by all persons with disabilities and to promote respect for their inherent dignity. As of November 2019, it has 163 signatories, which includes the European Union. The Convention is monitored by the UN Committee on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities and a network of national equality and human rights commissions. The UN CRPD has been an important catalyst for national and supranational legislation around the world and is cited as influencing the UK Equality Act and the European Accessibility Act. In addition to the UN CRPD, there are a range of local laws and regulations affecting disability, discrimination and access to information. The Americans with Disability Act, ADA 1990, affords protections against discrimination to Americans with disabilities similar to those found in the US Civil Rights Act. The UK Disability Discrimination Act of 1995, along with nine other discrimination laws, were merged into the UK Equality Act in 2010. Legislation intended to protect disabled Canadians include the Accessibilities for Ontarians with Disabilities Act of 2005 and the Accessible Canada Act of 2019. In, in Australia, it's the Disability Discrimination Act of 1992. In Spain, Royal Decree 1494 of 2007. In Israel, it's Equal Rights for Persons with Disabilities Law 5758 of 1998 and 2018. At the European level, the EU Web Accessibility Directive of 2016 is designed to provide people with disabilities better access to the websites and mobile apps of public services in Europe. The directive covers websites and apps in public sector bodies with a limited number of exceptions. The implementation period is from 2018 to 2020. Annual monitoring and reporting of public sector websites and apps is required and must be communicated to the Commission and made public for the first time by the 23rd of December 2021. The EU Web Accessibility Directive of 2016 is implemented by national laws and regulations, including in the UK, the Public Sector Bodies, Websites and Mobile Applications Accessibility Regulations of 2018, and in Spain, by Rule Decree 1112 of 2018, and many others around Europe. Looking forward, the European Accessibility Act of 2019 is a European Union Directive that provides common rules on accessibility in the EU uh, to make more accessible products and services in the market and facilitate cross-border trading. It considers obligations deriving from the UN CRPD and covers, amongst other things, computers, digital kiosks, smartphones, smart TVs, telephony, media services, banking, transport, e-books and e-commerce. The implementation period is from 2022 to 2025. 
In addition, Section 508 of the U.S. Rehabilitation Act governs accessibility of ICT in the federal government and has a counterpart in the EU's EN301549 accessibility requirements suitable for public procurement of ICT products and services in Europe. Section 508 was refreshed in 2018 to WCAG 2.0, Level A and AA in a coordinated effort aimed at international harmonisation with European Commission work on EN301549. Finally, the Marrakesh Treaty to facilitate access to published works for people who are blind or visually impaired, or otherwise known as the MVT of 2013, requires limitations and exceptions to copyright law to permit reproduction, distribution and making available of published works in formats designed to be accessible to visually impaired persons. It covers persons who are blind, visually impaired or print disabled or with a physical disability that prevents them from holding and manipulating a book. Disability Worldwide The World Health Organization estimates that 1.2 billion people are disabled globally, or about 15% of the world's population. One in five of working adults have a disability, and 80% of disabilities are hidden, which means that you may not be aware of it, and individuals may not wish to disclose it. 75% of people with a disability have walked away from either a business or a job due to barriers associated with accessibility. The disposable income globally of disabled people is estimated to be over a trillion dollars. This makes disabled people the largest minority group in the world with enormous spending power. Types of disability Disability varies, but the five most common impairments are visual, auditory, speech, movement and cognitive. A visual impairment means that vision or sight is limited to some extent. This varies from reduced vision in one or both eyes, low vision, to substantial irreversible loss of vision in both eyes, blindness. Some people have limited or no sensitivity to certain colours, which is colour blindness, or an increased sensitivity to bright colours. An auditory impairment limits the ability to hear and varies from impairment in one or both ears to deafness, which is complete hearing loss in both ears. People with an auditory impairment may be able to hear sound, but cannot always understand speech, especially when there is a lot of background noise. Hearing aids help people who fall into this category. Conditions that affect the brain and central nervous system can lead to cognitive and neurological impairment which affect the ability to read. However, such conditions do not correlate with the ability to cognitively process and understand content. Dyslexia is a common cognitive impairment that involves difficulty reading due to problems identifying speech sounds and learning how they relate to letters and words. And it affects areas of the brain that process language. A speech impediment or an impairment of a communication type is where normal speech is disrupted and cannot be recognised. Impairments include stuttering and lisps, or can be more profound, while being mute is an inability to speak at all. People with speech impediments often experience problems with voice-based services, so alternate services are required. A physical or motor impairment means that motor functions are disrupted and movement restricted. This diverse group of limitations includes people with involuntary movements, spasms or tremors, coordination problems, paralysis, arthritis and other difficulties. Sight and vision impairment. The World Health Organization reports that at least 2.2 billion people in the world have a vision impairment or blindness. Of these, 285 million people are blind or have a moderate or severe visual impairment, which equates to approximately 4% of the global population. In Western, Central and Eastern Europe, over 21 million people are registered blind 
or have an MSPI. In the United Kingdom, there are 2.5 million people with a, an MSBI and 270,000 people registered blind. Globally, the leading causes of vision impairment include uncorrected refractive errors and cataracts. However, there are many more conditions which have a serious impact on sight, including cataracts and glaucoma. Most people with vision impairment are over the age of 50 years. And as global demographics change, so do the number of people affected by age-related conditions. A person with 20-20 vision can see what an average individual can see on an eye chart when they are standing 20 feet away. To be considered legally blind, visual acuity must be 20-200 or worse. Diseases can impact sight differently. For example, Cataracts cause sight to become cloudy or misty, and some people report dazzle at night or in bright sunshine. Age-related macular degeneration is a condition that damages your optic nerve and causes loss of side vision in the early stages and central vision in the later stages. Diabetic retinopathy can affect the blood vessels at the back of the eye, which leads to patchy loss of central vision or side vision. Glaucoma is a condition that damages the optic nerve and causes loss of side vision in the early stages and central vision in the later stages. Consequently, accommodations must vary to deal with the differing characteristics of the disease. Standards. Standards play a critical role in ensuring that all information is accessible to everyone by ensuring that it can be easily read regardless of impairment. Accessible document standards include traditional formats such as Braille, large print and audio, as well as digital formats like PDF, HTML and EPUB. These formats must be accurate and legible if they are to be meaningful to the people they're intended for. UCAF has introductions to all of these formats which you can view or download from the UCAF website. Importantly, these formats all represent useful accommodations, and what we want to convey in this presentation is the very broad range of accessible formats and information available. Braille. Braille is a tactile reading system used by people who are visually impaired. It can be embossed on paper, or alternatively, it can be read using refreshable Braille displays. A full Braille cell includes six raised dots arranged in two columns, each column having three dots, with the number and arrangement of the dots distinguishing one character from another. There are 64 possible combinations, including no dots, representing a space between words. Unified English Braille, UEB, is a Braille code developed by the International Council on English Braille to bring together several existing Braille codes into one unified code. This includes the literary code, mathematics, computer code and music code. Grade 1 Braille includes the basic code and Grade 2 includes contractions which help compress text and uh, improve the reading experience for users. UEB has been adopted in all the major English-speaking countries, including the UK, USA, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, Nigeria and South Africa. In October 2011, UCAF decided to adopt UEB as the official Braille code for the United Kingdom. Braille has the advantage that it can be read from embossed paper sheets as well as Braille displays connected to computers. There are an estimated 20,000 users in the UK. Audio and text-to-speech Audio has historically been a very popular alternate format for blind and partially sighted users, and services in the UK like the Talking News Federation and the RNIB's Talking Books have for many years provided services to the general public, originally as tapes and records but latterly as CDs and digital audio. Traditionally, content has been transcribed by human readers, but nowadays, automatic transcription by artificial intelligence can produce excellent quality results. 
Text-to-speech is used widely with screen readers, such as NVDA, JAWS and Apple VoiceOver, to provide audio narration when using computers. The EPUB DAISY standard allows narration to be synchronised with audio. Large print. Unlike some other alternative formats, large print tends to lack strong internationally recognised standards. Large print involves displaying text to a user with font sizes typically above 16 points and represents by volume the largest of the alternate format remediations for printed documents. Two techniques are prevalent. Resizing is used with responsive content and devices like ebooks and e-readers which allow information to be sized according to a user's preference while retaining a high quality of presentation. This technique ensures that the best possible results are achieved but requires the original document design to be responsive to such resizing. Where responsiveness is not possible, Zoom can simply enlarge content to fill the screen, but with a noticeably pixelated appearance on the screen and consequent loss of quality. A recent innovation in accessible print technologies is to use smartphones to scan the page or a barcode to capture text that may be narrated by screen readers. This may then be resized and read in larger typefaces or using speech synthesis. DAISY and EPUB EPUB is a standard for digital ebooks published by the International Digital Publishing Forum and is the most widely supported vendor independent XML based, as opposed to PDF, ebook format. EPUB 2 was approved in October 2007 and the EPUB 3 specification became effective in October 2011. The EPUB format is based on many open standards, including the W3C's HTML. In May 2016, IDPF members approved a merger with the World Wide Web Consortium to fully align the publishing industry and core web technology. DAISY, Digital Accessible Information System, is a technical standard for digital audiobooks, periodicals and computerised text. DAISY is designed to be used as a complete audio substitute for print material and is specifically designed for use by people with print disabilities including blindness, impaired vision and dyslexia. Based on the MP3 and XML formats, the DAISY format has features that allow visually impaired listeners to navigate something as complex as an encyclopedia or a textbook, otherwise impossible using conventional audio recordings. DAISY and EPUB are closely related standards using similar container formats. Publishing electronic books with audio narrative has become popularised by services like Audible, and EPUB is undoubtedly the most important digital standard for the publishing industry, which is using EPUB as the source format for both digital and paper publishing. Books, magazines, documentation and long-form documents are the most likely to benefit from being published with EPUB. HTML Hypertext markup language is the most basic building block of the web and the recent HTML5 standard adds even more support for semantic tagging, which makes it ideal for defining the meaning and structure of content. Other technologies besides HTML are generally used to describe the web page's appearance or presentation qualities, CSS, or its functionality and behavior, JavaScript. Web content can be made accessible by making sure the correct hypertext markup language elements are used for the correct purpose. The HTML standard is developed and published by the World Wide Web Consortium, the W3C. WIIARIA is a specification written by the W3C defining a set of additional HTML attributes that can be applied to element attributes that can be applied to elements to provide additional semantics and improve accessibility wherever it is lacking. For example, for user interface controls that involve unsemantic HTML and dynamic JavaScript. HTML is a normative reference for the W3C WCAG, 
EPUB and DAISY standards.